Hey guys, what's up? It's Lainey and today I am talking about some of the romance books I read last year. I don't know how I feel about this background. I'm like slowly trying to test things out. So <laughs> this could be the only time you see it. Anyway, I mentioned in my wrap up that I read an overabundance of romance novels last year. It's true. I would like to thank Mrs. Book Lover. She commented on my wrap up saying that I should do a video of some of the romance books that I read that I really liked. So yeah, if you don't like romance, probably not gonna like this video. I mentioned this in my wrap up. I do read dark romance and dark romance has a lot of elements that would be unsuitable for readers who uh, would be uncomfortable. Trigger warnings isn't something that necessarily affects me. I mean, sometimes I kind of have a trigger warning for suicide, but it's something I don't need to know going into the book, but even though it will still like be like, whoa, shocks me. Most of the dark romance in the dark romance genre, not that I'm an expert or anything, but a lot of them will have the same trigger warnings. So it's a lot of abuse, which can come from like sexually, emotionally, physically, and a lot of what I like to call like dubious consent. Um, a lot of consent issues in dark romance books. You can get into the torture and the self-harm and stuff depending on what kind of dark romance you end up reading. I want to make you guys comfortable. I decided to put all the dark romance books that I read and enjoyed at the end of the video so that you can definitely enjoy the non-dark romance books that I read that you might, you know, enjoy yourself. I will say when I will start talking about the dark romance books, if you're uncomfortable with that, you can peace out. Let's get started with the romance books that I read last year. I have a good chunk that I felt like really stood out to me and that I would recommend to other people. I didn't rate any of the books that I read last year. It kind of was just like either I liked it or I didn't like it. The first one that I read was X Games by Stella Reese. I <sighs> really loved this book. X Games follows two people, Taylor and Mason. What happens is that Taylor's fiance kind of leaves her. He dumps her and leaves her with like the rent to the apartment. She learns that he's now getting married. His older brother shows up to her apartment and offers to pay all off her debt if she comes to the wedding with him. And he wants to bring her to the wedding because his brother is marrying his ex-girlfriend. There's a lot of exes going on in this book. Because she's like in a tough financial situation, she's like, okay, fine, I'll go to the wedding with you of, you know, the wedding that technically should have been mine. I love this. I ate it up. This is the trope that I love. Fake dating. I am all about fake dating trope. There's a lot of tension. Mason and uh, Taylor had really good banter that I was like totally for. I really like Stella Reese and I also started reading her another one of her books, Bad Boss. I was reading it on the way to <laughs> Booknet Fest and then I just got really uncomfortable with like reading that book on my Kindle because I was like still like scrunched up between people and I'm like I don't really want them to see what I'm reading. So then I went to Harry Potter and I was reading Harry Potter on the plane because I'm like that no one will judge me for. I'm definitely wanting to read more Stella Reese throughout this year. Second one I want to mention is Royally Screwed by Emma Chase. This one features also a trope that I love. It follows the story of Olivia and Nicholas. Nicholas happens to be the his royal highness from this fictional country called Wesco. She doesn't know who he is when he comes into her financially failing diner and he like says some like rude things to her and she like throws a pie in his face and it just kind of like blossoms from there obviously. I haven't finished the rest of the series. I was kind of interested in the second one, kind of wasn't interested in the second one, and I saw the title for the third one, Royally Endowed, and it just kind of like killed the series for me. I'm not reading a book called Royally Endowed. Romance titles are ridiculous. Sometimes I don't even want to say them. I really liked Royally Screwed. I liked their rapport between Olivia and Nicholas. I love these tropes because I loved The Prince and Me, that movie. Like, it's one of my favorite movies. I had those feelings while I was reading this book. Third book I want to mention is actually a series, but last year I did read the final book in the in the series. That is the Outlaw series by L. Kennedy, third one being Ruled. It's three different couples, but they all know each other. I don't even want to say couples. <laughs> the third one does not, doesn't feature a couple. It features like a three relationship thing. This is a post-apocalyptic rated R version of like a dystopian novel. I really liked the accurate portrayal that I feel like this this kind of world would be very real if we had like a government fallout. There's like this central city 
that's like guarded and everything. Everybody that lives outside of this central city are called outlaws and they try, the government tries to gather them up and kind of like reprogram them into this kind of new society. I really liked all three of these books. I think the third one was my favorite. The third one features a male female male couple or is it a male male female? I don't know the, the right order to put them in but they all are like together together. I really like the series because it's very sex positive as well as everybody's kind of sexually fluid. I just liked reading that. There's definitely alpha males in this book but none of them are like overly possessively dumb. They really let the female shine. Next book I'm gonna mention is another title that I don't like saying so I'm only gonna say it once. Sweet Filthy Boy by Christina Lauren. I was talking to Jordan from the Jordan Journals and she's like you need to read this book you're gonna love it. I started reading it and I was like oh, yes I definitely like this book. This book features three best friends. They go to Vegas for like one last hurrah after they graduated from college. They meet up with these like three guys and then they all go out and party one night and then they wake up and they're all like married to each other. This book is a companion series. First book follows the couple that decides like, hey, you know what, let's stay married and let's see what kind of happens and let's go to Paris because that's where he's from. Mia and Ansel go off to Paris to spend the summer together, kind of get to know each other while remaining married. I really liked it. I mean, I'm kind of trash for like a setup like that. I do plan to continue reading the series because I really liked all the side characters. I thought all the side characters were really unique and different. I liked the friendship between the three girls because even if Mia was in Paris for most of the summer, she still kept in contact with her best friends. And I liked that because sometimes side characters can fall away to the main couple. Not the case here. Really liked it. Would recommend. The next book I read was a duology. I binged within like two days. The first title is also weird so I'm sorry. Enslaved by the Ocean and Where Darkness Lies by Bella Jewel. This one features modern pirates which was why I picked up the book. First one follows Indigo and Hendrix and Indigo and her best friend Eric decide to go like on a whirlwind ocean yacht adventure. Indigo is trying to like get away from her crazy crazy ex-boyfriend. Suddenly when they're out on the ocean like the yacht starts to like explode and there's like fire everywhere and then they're like trying to escape. Fucking modern pirate ship shows up, takes them fucking captive. She's like taken to like the captain's quarters. Captain is Hendrix and he's like super fine. He decides that she would be a good way to get out of his debt he has to another like pirate on the ocean. He's gonna give her to this dude to pay off his debt so that this dude can sell her to, I mean, you can probably guess whoa, what would happen if you sell a girl. This one was like super angsty and super fun. Like, I mean, I read it in a day. It had really good banter. It was just like really good tension throughout the entire book, it was built really well. One of the side characters, uh, who's a girl, she is the next one in the next book, which I decided to read right away. And I also read that one very quickly. That one surprisingly doesn't take place as much out on the sea as the first one did, but it does, you know, have that modern pirate feel. The next book I'm going to mention is Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. This is my first Penelope Douglas book that I read. I mentioned her just now in my um, wrap up. I read one of her first books. Corrupt I really really liked and I liked Corrupt more than I liked Bully. So this one follows Erica and Michael. This one is told in alternating timelines from when they were in high school to when they are now because we know that Erica is the reason why Michael got in trouble and his friends went to jail. But we don't know what happened or why. So the past timeline is kind of the events that lead up to what happened to these guys. And then the present timeline is all these guys are now out of jail and they're like really pissed off at her and they want to like kind of get even with her. This one is a new adult, but it's kind of like a darker new adult, but not too dark. I guess. I really enjoyed this. I was really digging the mystery aspect of it because I'm like what did this girl do to these dudes? And then on the other side I'm like do these dudes need to get away from her? Like stop. There's like this really steamy scene that like I was not expecting but I was like totally on board for. Obviously if you read a lot of romance you see a lot of the same kind of sex scenes going on but like this one was like totally different and I was like whoa. There is a second book that just came out, Hideaway, that follows one of the side boys. I have to read it because I really liked his side character. He was like my favorite of the side characters so then he gets his own book. That is the end of my lighter fluffier romance I guess. And now I'm going to be getting into more of the darker romance. I somehow like to seek out 
dark romances that will shock me. Here we go. I kept seeing the series on my Goodreads email because there's specific friends I have on Goodreads that like totally are like, we, we like the same romance books. I'm always looking at their reviews because everything that they like, I tend to like as well. Everybody was talking about this series called Pretty Stolen Dolls by Ker Dookie and Kay Webster. Everybody was talking about how messed up it was. When I hear things that are like shocking and like, yo, this is like the most messed up book I've read, I'm gonna want to get it. Yes, this was the most messed up book I have ever read. This one follows Jade and she is a detective. She escaped a serial killer when she was younger. Her and her sister were both kidnapped when they were I think she was like maybe 12 or 13 and her sister was younger than her. When she was, I think, 18, she escaped from his captivity. She ran out, she wasn't able to save her sister, and then when she was found, she wasn't able to figure out, her and the police weren't able to figure out where he was. All this time, her sister is still in this serial killer's possession. The story picks up kind of with a clue that she feels like he's back. Serial killer's name is Benny and he's on the younger side. He was like 20 or 21 when he took the girls, so he's still significantly older than them, but he's not like, and I feel really gross that I'm like defending him, but he's not like a super old creepy dude. So that is like the premise of this series. There's four books, I read three of them. I hesitate to say that I enjoyed them because they're so messed up. Once you get into his perspective, you start to like sympathize with him and like that's messed up. The next book that I read was uh, Prisoner by Sky Warren and Anika Martin. This one tells the story of this girl named Abby and Grayson. Abby is in college or she's getting her master's or something I forget. She's supposed to do this like project. Her project is assigned to the prison so she's supposed to teach English and creative writing to these prisoners. You could probably guess where this is going. There's this prisoner, Grayson, he kind of sees her as his way out of prison because he wants to break out. It's not a spoiler to say that he does break out and he takes her with brings her along to his like road trip to get to his homeboys. Yeah, I really like this book. It's weird to say that it was like an adventure book because it kind of was and I like road trip adventures and that's what he was kind of doing. It's not like I finished reading that book and I'm like time for me to go uh, volunteer at the local prison. I started looking up some of more of Sky Warren's other works and then I just read a whole bunch of her books. Prisoner was my favorite of those books and they just recently released a companion novel to that kind of series. I'm like really excited to read it. Wanderlust was like my second favorite book I've read of hers. I feel weird saying I liked them because obviously they're like super problematic but these books also aren't marketed to teenagers. So like they're marketed to grown women and grown women know better so yeah. The last book I wanted to mention was one of the last books I read of last year that I really loved and that is Born Darkly by Trisha Wolfe. I'm currently reading the second book in the series that like just came out this past week. This one follows London and Grayson. London is a criminal psychologist that has built her career on analyzing serial killers and their behaviors. And then Grayson is, you guessed it, a serial killer. So the first part of their book has to do with their doctor-patient sessions. And the tension in this book is incredible. Like you could honestly cut the tension with a knife. I was reading it like I need to know more and I just like wanted to read it all at once. The thing about Grayson that kind of redeems him is that he's a vigilante serial killer so he only kills people that are trash to begin with. He sets up traps for them so the perfect way to describe this book to me is like Harley Quinn and the Joker meet Saw. That's pretty much what this book is and I really 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 loved it. I thought the tension was like built very naturally and very sexy I guess. There was a lot of things that were revealed about the characters later on in the book that I really liked. That's actually all I have for the romance books I read last year. I never really like featured like my favorite romance books ever and like I just never really wanted to like mention like yo I read a lot of this stuff and if you guys are reading these books please let me know because I was like solo reading these all throughout the year and I had no like literally no one to talk to. I did not talk to anybody about these books. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys very soon. Bye!